Hello, dear friends. I'm glad to be with you again in this hour to speak to you a word from the Bible, the Word of God. And I want to speak to you concerning <clears throat> the fact that God Almighty is a Father to the Christians, to those who believe, to all believers in Christ Jesus, the Almighty God, the Almighty God, Jehovah God, becomes our Father. Have a Father. Now, in the book of Romans, the 8th chapter and verse 15, we read this word, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Abba is the word a little child uses, Dada or Mama, you know, when you're born into this world. And so when we're born again, we cry, Abba, Father. God becomes our Father, and it's a wonderful thing to know this that God is our Father. I'm going to read a scripture in Hebrews, the second chapter, and it's a good word for us to understand that we no need to fear dying anymore since God has become our Father. Since He who is the author of life has become our Father. In the Bible, in verse 14, it says that, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, Jesus Christ Himself took part of the same. He came down from heaven and took part of our bodies, he took a body of his own, that he through death might destroy the devil who had the power of death. Until Jesus came, your devil seemed to have had the power of death. But when Jesus came, he took away that power from the devil, and now the power has no authority over you. He cannot take your life until God ordains it, because Jesus now is the authority of death. He holds the keys of death. And hell at his gate, at his at, at his belt. And so the Bible says, and he delivers them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. You know, until Jesus came into the world, people were afraid to die, afraid to die. They had no answer to death. But Jesus came and said, "I'm the resurrection and the life. Believe in me, and you will never die." Believe in me and you will rise again and be with me and all those who love me and love you will be in heaven together forever. And so we praise God that we are we are not given a spirit of fear, but a, a bondage. But we are given a spirit of, uh, of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Abba, Father. Over in the book of Second Timothy, we read another good word uh, I'd like for you to, to share with you. And that is in the first chapter, verse 7, it says, God has given us not the spirit of fear, but He's given us a, the spirit of power and love and a sound mind. So God has given you, a Christian, not a spirit of fear. Cast out that fear. But He's given you a spirit of power. You have power with God and power with men. You have the strength that Lord God alone can give you. And you belong to Him, and He is your strength today to help you find your way. Yes, I know. Someone out there is saying, I don't know how I'm going to get through this situation. But God is saying, trust me, and I'll get you through that situation. Nothing impossible with God. And He is saying, trust me. Let me guide you through it. Let me lead you right into it. And I'm going to lead you through to victory. God bless you. Your way is past finding out when God works in mysterious ways, but He will work His way. His will is perfect. And He is saying to you, wait on me, and I will see you through it. Praise God. He's given us a spirit of power and of love, of love. The Bible says over in 1 John, that perfect love casts out fear. For where there is fear, there is torment. So praise God. You get the love of God in your heart. Dear friend, you get rid of fear. Fear will go when love comes in because fear of God is cast out. The love of God will cast out fear. And so praise God. You have fear in a sound mind. God give you a sound mind in your thinking as you look to Him, delivered from sin and the strongholds of sin and evil thinking, you will be delivered and set free. Praise God. Praise God. Over in Hebrews, the 13th chapter, I want to read a scripture to you, what I think is a good one to read. It's Hebrews 13 and 28. And it says something about the fear of God. My dear friends, 
if we fear God with a reverent, reverent, holy, awesome fear, a godly fear, then we'll fear nothing else. The Bible says in, in Hebrews 13, chapter, verse 28, Wherefore, we, we, are, we have received a kingdom which cannot be moved, lest let us have grace, therefore we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. We serve God with reverence and godly fear. Our God is a consuming fire, but He is also a mighty love, a powerful grace, a perfect love, and yet He is a God of power and of might, and therefore we ought to fear God. You ought to fear Him who gives you the breath you're breathing right now. You ought to fear Him who has power to cast body and soul into hell. You ought to fear Him who made you and gives you life and takes that life in His will. So we need to fear God. Not with a slavish fear, but a, a godly fear, a reverent fear. Oh, a fear that's built on love and the mighty fact that He's our Father. And we belong to Him. So this is important. And we need to recognize that that uh, when we're saved by grace, we're adopted and cry, Abba, Father. We don't fear anymore. Over in the Bible, uh, Isaiah 64, there's a good, chap uh, a good verse for us in the 64th chapter of Isaiah. And uh, the 8th verse, and here's what it says. But thou, o Lord, you're our Father. See, you're our Father. We're the clay and you're the potter. And all of us are the work of your hands. All of us are the work of your hands. Now, Lord God, you're our Father. Hallelujah. We're the clay. We're the clay. That's all we are is clay. But he's the potter. He's the potter that forms and molds and makes us what we ought to be. Hallelujah. And we're the work of his hands. Oh, praise God. I love that old song that says, Our Father is rich in houses and lands. The wealth of the world He holds in His hands of diamonds and rubies and silver and gold. His coffers are full. He has riches untold. And I'm a child of the King, a child of the King. With Jesus my Savior, I'm a child of the King. Praise God, you are a child of the King. Praise God for that. Now this word, now I want you to notice this word in Matthew, the 7th chapter, verse 11. There's a good word I want to share with you. And here's what it says. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Holy Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask Him? Oh, God wants to give you good things, dear Christian. God loves you very much. You're His child. He loves you. You're His son or His daughter. And He said, I love you. And I've given my Holy Son for you. And Jesus has given His holy life for you and rose again and calls you now to Himself. How much more will the Holy Father give good gifts to them that ask Him? Oh, God loves you. God loves you. God will take care of you. I like the little story I've often told about the little boy running down the street to the bus stop and it started raining. And he looked up on the hill and he just stopped and was waiting for the bus. And the man rode by and said, Son, you got to go down here to the next block, the bus stop. The bus don't stop until it gets to the bus stop. You're coming down. The boy said, That's all right. The man kept on running and here come the bus. Oh, and he put on the brakes and stopped right there for that little boy. And the man ran down the street and looked back, and the little boy got in the bus, and he hollered at the man and said, The driver is my daddy. <laughs> the driver was his father. I'm going to tell you something, dear friend. God is your father. He's not going to let you stand out in the rain. He's going to come and pick you up. He's going to take care of you. He's your God, and He's your Father. And they of those of us who are redeemed by blood cry, Abba, Father. We have not received the spirit of fear to bondage, but we've received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. God bless you. May the Father bless you. And you that are not Christians, open your heart to Jesus and live for God as your Father. Amen and Amen.